thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Today we're talking about uh, sleep apnea and your journey. And uh, would love to start out just by uh, asking you a few questions. So, you know, maybe tell you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your background, what you do, all of that great stuff. How old you um, are? Yeah, I'm, uh, my name's Ken. I'm a I'm a technician. I manage a couple of guys that work on phones and stuff. Nothing crazy. Thirty three years old. <laughs> Nothing too crazy. So, so um, when did you first realize that you uh, had sleep apnea? Uh, when I was married years ago, my ex wife used to tell me all the time that I would uh, gasp in my sleep. But I actually didn't know what it was, so I never really thought anything of it. Um, I, for the most part, felt fine. Well, years later down the road, I went to go visit my family. My dad had got diagnosed with sleep apnea, really bad sleep apnea. And apparently they noticed that I was gasping in my sleep and told me about it. That's when I went to the doctor and found out I have sleep apnea. So I've probably had it for, you know, a dozen years at least, like 12, 13 years at least, and just not known. Wow. That's so a dozen years without not knowing it. And Yeah. Uh, I just never wow. thought anything of it because I just didn't know what it was. So. Yeah, and and you probably had it before then even as well, right? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, uh, I was a real skinny kid, and even then, I still had it. You know, I I guess so. It did yeah. get a little bit worse later on, of course, but yeah. Yeah, and and describe the process of getting diagnosed. So so you went to a doctor, and and how did that work out? So yeah, I just went to a doctor, told him that I've been hearing that gas in my sleep. They gave me a sleep study, and I took it. I was at home, um, set it up, and yeah, I. Had sleep apnea pretty bad too i think it was like 60 times an hour or something like that like it was up there <laughs> wow and and how how were you feeling at the time did you feel uh any impact of the sleep apnea when you were diagnosed did so you when i first got di when I, well, before i got diagnosed i really didn't notice a whole lot i i for the most part i felt okay i so i didn't think anything of it um a few years uh some years ago i decided to try to put on a little bit of weight and I would get a little bit and start working out. It got a lot worse after that, like considerably okay. worse. After I hit around like 210 pounds, I started waking up with pounding headaches. Uh -huh. um, I would sleep 10 hours long and still feel like I hadn't slept at all. Felt like I needed to sleep more. Yeah, I felt terrible. And it's probably, and I, honestly, I really feel like it was affecting my mood a lot. It was hurting my relationships because I was just angry all the time, was upset all the time. Yeah, it was doing a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah, irritability, I think, is a pretty common thing for oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. been a lot better now, so thank God. <laughs> That's wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah. And certainly, yes, it impacts mm. energy levels. Um, did, did you find that you were, were tired after work and things like that? Uh, I was tired all day. <laughs> so okay. I'd be, I was at work out a couple of times. I'd be, fall, I'd be falling, sorry, I'd be falling asleep at work. And it, yeah, oh. it was starting to become a problem. And that's when I was like, I really got to get this figured out. <laughs> And how were how were long drives for you? Not great. I mean, I would get pretty sleepy on them. Never had any major instances or anything like that. Um, I've never been a big one in the stimulants, so like caffeine and stuff. So I would try to go without. Sometimes I couldn't, but yeah, they weren't pleasant at least. So, did you notice any impacts maybe to to your your thought process, or, or did you experience any brain fog or anything like that? Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I until I got it figured out, I think I don't realize how foggy my mental state was all the time um at the time i thought i was fine but afterwards i kind of realized like your ability i mentioned i'm just getting mad over stuff that i just i don't know why it bothered me <laughs> so much but no absolutely no it absolutely affected my not only my mood but my mental process <laughs> no, i understand that completely i as i yeah. mentioned i have apnea as well and so and i yeah. didn't get fixed until just this past year so yeah, oh, uh, wow. yeah it's, it's a pretty common. dramatic um pretty dramatic impact uh, yeah, so, so after you uh, after you had your sleep study, let's talk a little bit about uh, you know uh, what you did from there on. Oh, well, I, I did get put onto a CPAP. I absolutely hated it. I couldn't stand it. I was one of those guys that just did not want to be on a machine. So I tried everything to avoid it, and I didn't even use it for a while because you know I, I for the most part thought I felt okay. Um, I used an elevated pillow, which I think helped a little bit. The kind of pounding headaches went away some. Still wasn't great. Eventually, I was just. Eventually, I ended up getting a surgery for uh, um, a deviated septum, okay. and I started doing breathing my nose there. So I was like, "Well, let me just give it another chance." Um, still was okay. I, I know you're really not supposed to mess with yourself, but I adjusted the pressure myself, the maximum and the minimum. I lowered the maximum, increased the minimum. All of a sudden, I was actually actually able to use it. It's uh, because I guess I was having a hard time breathing with it when it was low, and when it was high, it would start blowing everywhere. Um, but since I got my nose surgery, I said, screw it. And I got a, a nose pillow and okay. it's been a huge difference. It's perfect. Oh, so it's a different, different kind of mask, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just goes, it goes on my nose and that's it. It doesn't cover my whole face. So it's a little bit, a little bit smaller. I don't have a problem with sleeping my mouth open since I got that surgery. So right. I kind of lucked out on that one. <laughs> 
Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. And how long would you say it took for you to, to sort of, once you got the machine, to finally get the machine working right for you? Oh, it honestly took kind of a while because I, I kept it in the closet for a long time. I mean, I probably had the machine for over a year before I actually started really, really trying with it. Uh, I mean, I did try when I first got it for a couple of weeks and then I was just kind of like, screw this. <laughs> I just put it away. Um, but then by about a year, year and a half then, I was like, I've really got to take care of this. So that's yeah. Was, was, was it a conversation that prompted it or, or just sort of the symptoms or how did it work? It was, symptoms were starting to get a little bit worse and I, I just... I don't know. I kind of was just thinking about it. I thought I was like, I just really need to fix it. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. And uh, did you get any information from anywhere on how to calibrate the machine or change things up or, or uh, change pillows, as you mentioned? You know, I, the nose pillow, somebody gave me a recommendation. I'm not, I can't even remember who it was. I think it was like, it might have been a friend or something like that. And then the machine calibration, I just randomly saw a video of a guy cal messing with another machine, and I just never thought about pulling any buttons down and figured out how to get into it, and that, that was it. So I just saw a YouTube video of a guy doing it on another machine, okay. and it made, a it made a big difference. <laughs> so Okay. So how long have you been on the machine now? About a month, month and a half. month and a half. And uh, tell, tell us about the differences that you've noticed in your life. It's been very dramatic, honestly. I just feel all around better. When I was younger, I was always a morning person that kind of stopped after my sleep apnea got bad because I was always tired. I've gotten to the point where I wake up at, you know, early in the morning, six, around six o'clock, no problem. Just completely wide awake and rested. Overall, not, not as tired throughout the day. I'm able to work out easier. Just, yeah, it's been pretty dramatic. I don't wake up. I've gotten to the point where I don't want to sleep without it. Like if I, there was one day I had the mask on a little too tight, for instance. And so a few hours in, I woke up and I kind of just took it off. And I sat there and I was like, I don't want to sleep without that. It's not even worth it. <laughs> so I just sucked it up, put it back on and went back to sleep. <laughs> so, yeah, it's wow. been pretty dramatic. I don't, I don't want to go without it. So. Wonderful. So, so as you mentioned, your energy levels are better. How's your mood and, and, uh, and thought process? Oh, that's better. I've noticed I don't get angry as easy. It's everything's better. <laughs> yeah. It's been a very dramatic difference. Sleep is important especially having yeah. problems for years <laughs> so yeah you know and, and i don't i don't think many of us recognize how important it is i, I think there are probably a lot of folks uh, like you and me who you know had anger issues and who would have yeah. thought it, it was completely related to the sleep and not related to uh to to anything else right we're oh, yeah. good people essentially <laughs> oh yeah and i know like my dad said the same thing that and they were telling him that he may go crazy if he doesn't do something about the sleep at me and i was like i yeah don't want oh you know i forgot that actually scared me a little bit too. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. So what were time, the things that, that scared you? First of all, I, I, hypertension runs in my family and I wasn't trying to make it worse because I know you can have a heart attack because of this. And I mean, I'm, I'm in my thirties. I'm not trying to say die in 10 years because I just didn't use a CPAP. So I was like, yeah, I got to fix it. Or the idea that like my mental state could deteriorate from lack of deep sleep. Those were really the two things that just scared the crap out of me. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it, it's certainly uh, serious. And, you know, did you feel that you were supported by doctors throughout this process? Uh, I know you mentioned that you you stopped, you didn't use it for about a year yeah. after you got it. Um, did, did you see a doctor after that or, or was it uh, just you were on your own? A, it would get brought up sometimes when I would go for other things. I kind of avoided talking about it, I guess, because I knew the solution was the CPAP and I didn't really want to use it. Um, so I would talk about other things, but it, it would get brought up when I went for other things, but not really. I didn't really, like, nobody really followed up with me or anything like that. Obviously, that was put on me to check with them, and I just kind of didn't. <laughs> so Yeah, until, well, until it guess, takes time and energy, right? And if you don't have either, that makes it challenging. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. And so uh, if you had a recommendation or, or maybe more than one recommendation for folks with sleep apnea, what would they be? <laughs> Don't give up on trying to get used to the machine. There's so many things that can be done. The pressure settings can be changed, masks can be changed. I feel like anybody can find a configuration that will work for them. If, if you're not able, if you're just not able to get used to it, just talk to your doctor about it and try to figure out a solution that will work. So, I mean, I, I managed to find one after forever. So, <laughs> surgery for the deviated septum did that help you? Yeah, it, uh, it made it to where I could use a no nose pillow um, rather okay. than a full mask, and I feel like that's just a lot more comfortable. And that in and of itself has improved my quality of life some, uh, but no, absolutely, that, that made a difference as well. Sure, great, great. And so um, so let, let's dive a little bit deeper. Let's describe a little bit more of 
<clears throat> you know, you know, so we talked about uh, your energy levels when you first were diagnosed. Mm. We talked about impact to your life, uh, thought process, relationships, any other negative impacts of sleep apnea that you you can remember from 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 your experience. Really, mostly headaches. <laughs> headaches. Um, like the first point, they would I would get them really bad in the morning when I woke up, and they would last for a while. It'd probably be a couple hours. They my head was just pounding, and also I never really noticed it until I got onto the CPAP for a while. Sure. But when I go without, I would wake up winded, and I never noticed that before. Um, I, I kind of just know that it, I was feeling it previously. I think I was just used to it. It was real weird, but mostly just. Energy levels, that's really the biggest thing, just energy levels and my mood, just anger, because I've always had a little bit of anger issues, and they've gotten a lot better. <laughs> they've gotten a lot better since this. Yeah. And so for the headaches, did you did you use um, any Advil or Tylenol or anything like that? Uh, yeah, sometimes if I had some caffeine in the morning, it would help a little bit. Not, not great. <laughs> so they were pretty bad. And, and you said you uh, avoided caffeine most of the time. Do you, do you use caffeine at all today? Sometimes here and there. It just depends. So, okay. But okay. not, you're not, a, you're not every it, day in the morning. Cool. What's that? Right. You're not every day in the morning coffee drinker or anything. No, no. Um, it's only only when I need it now. So I mean, it's not not nearly as often. Previously, I couldn't function without it. Now it's every once in a while. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yep. You know what things have been most helpful to you, right? So you mentioned sort of the interventions, but have there been people that have supported you? Uh, through your journey, anything like that? Yeah, I mean, my family's kind of always stressed it to me the importance of getting it taken care of. As well as I, have, I have some friends that know knew about it, and they did the same thing, and they would ask me questions about it. And yeah, my, my family pushed me pretty hard about it, <laughs> so that would yeah. say that would definitely helped. Yeah. yeah, no, that's wonderful. That's wonderful that they're supportive. Talk about you know. Uh, snoring and, and gasping for breath, right? Did, did you, you know, I, I, you know, for me personally, right? I mean, when I was growing up, that was always, you know, sort of an embarrassment for me, right? I mean, oh, yeah. Okay. Going over to sleepovers and things like that. Talk a little bit about what that meant to you. No, same thing. Like when I was married, my wife absolutely couldn't stand it. The snoring didn't bug so much as the gasping. I said I'd go real quiet, then all of a sudden be gasping for air, we just wake her up. Yeah, if I had people over or if I was at a friend's house and stuff like that, it would also kind of embarrass me a little bit. I'd Sometimes I try to force myself to sleep on my stomach or something, which I just don't like doing. So I always avoided that kind of stuff as much as I possibly could. But it, my but my ex-wife, it definitely impacted that. So she didn't want to sleep anywhere near me because of the snoring and the gasping. So but. Yeah, and I think that's a, a very common experience. Yeah. Uh, certainly in relationships. Uh, my first girlfriend, uh, you know, earplugs and then, you know. Yeah. And uh, my wife, uh, you know, when our daughter was born, uh, she was sleeping in a different room for for four years. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, my yeah, my uh, my ex kind of did the same thing for a little while. Not even like anything else. Not, nothing about the relationship. She was sleeping in the room just because it was loud. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. And that's not uh, not not good for anyone for sure. Yeah, but Certainly. I didn't realize there was health problems from it until much later. From when you first knew something was wrong. To when you finally got your CPAP, uh, how long would you say that took, and how many how many folks did you see about it? Uh, I'm trying to think here, I, when I first heard I was gasping, I thought maybe something was up, but I just didn't think anything of it. That was quite a while. I didn't really think of think that I need to go to a doctor specifically until much later visiting family, and it wasn't very long, maybe a couple of months. Um, I scheduled an appointment. It did take me a while to actually get to sleep study. I think it took me a few weeks. I talked to a piece a primary care special or primary care physician, but I only talked to maybe like one doctor about sleep apnea specifically. So well, it wasn't wasn't too big of a headache, but it did okay. take uh, took a took a couple months maybe total. Okay, so you you talked to a primary care first, and then they referred you to the sleep specialist. Yes, that's exactly it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you mentioned your AHI was 60 plus? Yeah, yeah, it was pretty high. It was like 66 or something like that. Yeah, it's pretty high. Yeah. So, uh, so and, it's, uh, it's, it's very low now that I have the CPAP. It's seriously with that plus, uh, I'll still use my wedge pillow some. It's less than one. <laughs> so Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. And uh, what was that conversation with your doctor like? You know, AHI is 66. What did, what did he tell you or she tell you? Uh, I just said that it was severe and that I needed to do something about it. That's really pretty much it. Uh, I know that there are health risks involved with it, so it really didn't take me much convincing. My dad had kind of already been told all that, 
and okay. then he told me about it and i was like yeah you're right that sounds pretty bad so and how long uh, i guess your dad had had it his whole life and and how long did it take for him to uh to recognize it and then get it under control uh, he's uh, he's definitely had it for a long time but i think it was kind of the same situation he put on some weight and it got worse um but uh, uh probably a couple years i would think that he was starting to have really bad problems i think he actually went for something else like he wasn't even going for the sleep apnea and they mm -hmm. told me my sleep apnea it was something like that um so okay. yeah <laughs> and so this was several years before before you it was probably a couple years before before me um like i, said, I, I didn't actually know that i had sleep apnea um until after he had been diagnosed and he heard me sleeping so oh i see i see yeah That's... exactly okay. yeah. yeah very cool Honestly, I feel like there's probably a lot of undiagnosed people that just have no idea. So, you know. yeah, and, you know, that's the goal is to help folks out, right? Um, to, you know, hopefully folks can find it sooner. Um, you know, you said you're in your 30s. Um, how much did you miss in your life as a result of, of probably, I'm probably a decent amount. It's probably, it's probably, it's probably affected my personal relationships more than it should have. So, and yeah. that by itself is probably made me miss out on some stuff. So, at least yeah. I got it now. At least I got to figure it out now. So. Yeah, no, it's 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 uh, it's you know, and that, I think that's a great uh, great point you're making, right? It's the life in the future that we have now that we're 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 healthier. Yeah, absolutely. If you ha could describe sort of the very worst day with with sleep apnea, wh what was that like for you? Really, I just felt terrible. I I, I it got to the point where when I was for la the last bit of time before I got it figured out. I was starting to say wake up at 11:30, and still feel like I needed more sleep, and I would have slept for 12 hours. Could not, could not feel rested to save my life. I, it almost felt, I almost felt hungover without any kind of drinking. It was absolutely awful. Would wake up with these pounding headaches, and it just got to the point where like if I wasn't at work, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I would just lay in bed, and that's it. Um, I would force myself to work, but when I went to work. I was not motivated. I couldn't, anything that I wasn't specifically forced to do, I just couldn't do. Probably lasted like, I feel like a week or it was just real bad. But seriously, I, I would come home from work, <laughs> eat, I'd probably go to bed at like 9, 10 o'clock, wake up at, you know, 10, 11 o'clock and still feel terrible. <laughs> so, wow. yeah, that, that that was probably like a week long that was just real bad. So. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, getting things done around the house, chores and things like that, has that been impacted at all? Yeah, I mean, it... Like I am a lot more motivated to actually do stuff now. <laughs> um, when before, like I said, I just I would lay in bed all day, just feeling like crap. So, I mean, it was almost like being really sick without actually being sick. It was terrible. So, yeah. yeah. No, and and uh, I understand that as well. I think uh, you know similar situation with me, right? Sort of sleeping longer than than most other people do. My wife would oh, get yeah. up, be productive for three four hours before I even get out of bed. Yeah, I'm, and I've never really been like that. Even when I knew I had sleep apnea when I was younger, I still wasn't like that. And it just it just got worse and worse until I was. Yeah, and I think that you know there's a confluence, right? I mean, um, you know, when you're younger, you can power through things. Mm -hmm. um, if you caffeinate, oh, yeah. and I know you didn't caffeinate quite as much as I did, but I definitely caffeinated. Yeah, and so uh, so it sounds like. Uh, you know, well, congratulations, number one, on, on yeah. overcoming uh, apnea. I call it overcoming because the the difference between our lives before oh. um, we got it controlled and now are just completely, completely different. And what was you, what was your experience for that first month after you got it? Strange, because like, and I knew what it was. I had, I, I had been breathing better all night. I, it was a, it was just a real weird feeling that I really can't describe. Uh, if like I even have, I have an oxygen I would check my oxygen, oxygen levels, and like beforehand I'd wake up and they'd be like in the low 90s, like 92. I woke up feeling real weird. Like I, it was almost like if I slept for like six hours, I felt like I had been sleeping for like 14 before. I'd wake up kind of, you know, when you, when you sleep a long time, you have a little bit of a headache from that. Um, that's kind of how I felt. I checked my oxygen levels there at 99, um, and I was, I was real surprised. Um, but yeah, for like for a few days, I felt real strange. <laughs> so, but overall, I knew it was a good thing, and I felt pretty good. So. Okay, and and uh, now you mentioned your energy levels are, are pretty high. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they're yeah, it's almost like I'm like when I was nineteen, almost. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That that does it does feel like you you're de-aged quite a bit. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Like it's, I know a lot of people, I know like a lot of people have a negative image of have, re requiring a machine, but it's worth it. It is absolutely worth it. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, have you, I know it's COVID now, but have you traveled at all with your machine? I've uh, not yet. Uh, I had to for work a little bit, but that was right before I started figuring this stuff out. Um, I got back and is when I was like, I gotta get this done. So I'm going to learn about that. I've, I've been told that since it's a medical device, you can fly with it. It doesn't even carry it count as a carry on. And they actually suggest you don't check it in. I'll probably be trying that here soon. Cause sometimes I have to travel for work. So see how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yep. very good, very good. Yep. So, um, so one last thing, and uh, you know, before we, we, I think we've covered everything that I wanted to ask about. Any, anything that I didn't ask about, you know, that that you'd like to share about your experience and and your journey. Mm, a bit stronger, like with everything, like my overall like ability to do just do things in the day, and then also if I go to the gym, it's a lot easier to push myself now. I would say that. Yeah. So. Yep. And, and so would you characterize that as sort of um, uh, a general weakness, right? Sort of, or, or, or is that more well, like... I, I think I'm just getting exhausted real easy. I mean, I think when you're, when you're, uh, when you have this problem, your overall oxygen level is just lower. <laughs> like even, even when you're awake, they're a lot lower. Oh, okay. And I think I'm just able to have a lot more endurance, I guess, mm -hmm. just in the day. So. Oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Is. So, wonderful. Okay. So the last thing here, um, if you look at the camera and say, uh, hey, uh, I have sleep apnea, but I've overcome it. Very simple. All right. All right. I have sleep apnea, but I've overcome it. So I appreciate you sharing your story. Hopefully by sharing your story, uh, it'll help someone else, right? And uh, yeah. you know, maybe they find out before they're in their 30s, right? That would be yeah. wonderful uh, because it has such an extraordinary impact on on everything that we do uh, in our lives. So thank you again for taking the time. Thank you, Ken. Take care and uh, enjoy the rest of the day here. Bye-bye. Yep,